success stories, and some of those stories we're going to talk about right now. Dr. Patrick Doran from the Nature Conservancy in Michigan is joining me right now. Patrick, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Christy? Good. Have you been enjoying the afternoon, seeing some of the sessions? I think it's been a great afternoon. Saw some wonderful sessions this morning, um, the introductions, saw some good stuff talking about Farm Bill, talking about some of, also another session talking about some of the specific restorations we've seen happening over the past year or two years. Yeah, and, you know, and it really has um, started to, as you and I have talked about before, started to pick up steam where we'll be able to see some of the results from the money that's been spent on that. Yeah, it's time for results. Mm -hmm. And I think the people, society, people in those places need to be aware of those results and some of the benefits that they may be receiving but not actually recognize. And, you know, when you talk about Great Lakes restoration, I think sometimes people think they want to see it directly on the lake, right there where the lake is, but it involves so many things outside and pathways and things that could be miles away from the lake, but still affects them. Exactly, I think, you know, we have a meeting like this, um, the very focus, we have the Great Lakes in every um, title, but people need to realize it might be miles from the lake, it might be dozens of miles, it might be 100 miles from the lake where the impacts to the lake are being felt, and that's the really to me as an ecologist one of the most interesting things about this region is that tight interface between the land and the water. Tell me about the selection process when the government can decide who gets the funding for certain projects, how you have to apply for the funding for a restoration project. Well I think um, if you remember a few years ago we heard a lot about a lot of language about being shovel ready and what is shovel ready? Shovel ready means <laughs> you are ready to go on to that restoration. Let's say you're restoring a wetland. It means you've got the plans in place. It means you've done the science to back it up. It means you've got the permitting in place. It means you've got all the partners in place. Mm -hmm. You're ready to go. The one thing you need is the dollars. You need the money. You need the grant or the public or private funding to actually start the work. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, how does the Nature Conservancy then go about um, picking some of the projects to, for restoration? So for again, I, I want to get back to this idea that there's a, a continuity of conservation. We start first by identifying the problem. We think about, well, what do we care about? What are the things we care about? Is it biodiversity? Is it the fish? Is it the wildlife? Is it the birds? Mm -hmm. Is it the values that they provide to society? So we start thinking there. And then we think about, well, what are the potential threats to them? So, for example, if I think about fish, um, our migrating fish here in the Great Lakes, things that move from the lakes up into the streams, things like our salmon and trout that we like to catch that move up and down, things like white suckers that we don't normally think about, but mm -hmm. it's a common fish that moves a lot of good nutrients up and down these streams. One of the threats to them is barriers. And we might think very simply about, oh, there might be a dam here or there. Well, we just did an analysis I, I worked on with some folks at the University of Wisconsin. We had a wonderful postdoc student there. Um, and Stephanie found that she identified all the potential barriers around the Great Lakes. There are 270,000 potential barriers that exist to fish moving from the lakes up into these streams. And that's we're not a staggering number. That's a staggering number. I'm not going to say that every single one of those is a problem, mm -hmm. but let's say 100,000 of them are a problem, so a third. Let's say a third are a problem. And if it took $50,000 to fix every one of that, that's $5 billion to fix. Mm -hmm. Wow. Just on that one Just issue alone. Just on that alone. one single issue alone. So the big step there is to step back and prioritize because we can't, we don't have five billion dollars to spend. I don't, I don't think you do. Well, you um, know, well, no, no, no. Not on that issue anyways. <laughs> um, so we have to then prioritize. And what's interesting about things like a, this kind of connectivity of streams is there's pressures to keep barriers in place, right? We mm -hmm. hear a lot about lamprey, there's contaminant issues people live on the still waters above these dams and they have their properties there that they've invested in. So there's pressures to keep those things. There's also pressures to get rid of barriers. Some of them are unsafe. Um, they coming up for regulation again, or some of them block key migrations of fish species that we want to go catch. Mm -hmm. We want to go out fly fish for. So you have to balance those barriers or those pressures to keep things and those pressures to get rid of things. So talk to me about the restoration project that you have been working on. So we have done some analysis specifically in the Two-Hearted River watershed, the big Two-Hearted in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. It's in Luce County. Okay. Um, many people have heard of the Two-Hearted because there's a lot of value up there. You may have cultural value. Ernest Hemingway wrote a book about the big Two-Hearted, right? Um, and Michigan Bell's Brewing Company has a beer named after the great Two-Hearted. So it's part of all culture. There's a cultural benefit there. There's mm -hmm. a cultural value. There's recreational value there. People go, um, camping there, they go canoeing and kayaking, there's a livery there, there's an economic value, there's also a lot of biodiversity value, it's, a, it's an untouched stream, it's a beautiful watershed, that watershed 
90% of that watershed is owned with some type of conservation um, objective to it. So it's a wonderful, beautiful place to go. But there was a problem there is that there were a number of places along the streams where there were barriers, either with poorly dis designed um, what we call road stream culverts, where the roads go over the river and there's a culvert underneath. Many mm -hmm. times that culvert is small, fish can't get through it because it's it's what we call perched. There's a ledge mm -hmm. they'd have to jump up it. Some up. fish can't jump. Some can, some can't. So they don't have access to the whole stream in which to spawn. So then you kind of wonder, you go back, who were the design people that, who were the engineers exactly. that came up with that to begin with? Well, they didn't, weren't thinking about the issue or it wasn't a problem at the time that the culvert was installed. So again, if I, what we can do then is kind of balance um, the economic cost to improving that. Wait, we can put a dollar figure. This one's going to take $10,000 to fix. That one's going to take $100,000 to fix. Mm -hmm. And we can also balance that against the benefit you might get. If we cost, this one costs $5,000 to fix, but it opens up 10 miles of stream, there's a cost benefit there. Or if this one costs $100,000, but it only opens up a mile of stream, ah, there's mm -hmm. a no-brainer right here. So what we did is went along and prioritized 11 crossings, and we were able to acquire Great Lakes Restoration Initiative money, funding, public funding, as well as some private funding, which was important for Match. Mm -hmm. I want to make another point here is the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, if you bought some type of private match to the table with it. Someone else who, um, from the outside who's going to be very interested care. in helping funding it your It might be your an project. individual, it might be a foundation, it could be a corporation, it could be any kind of public dollar, or pu private dollars, excuse me. If you bought that, it was much more competitive in terms of receiving the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative dollars. So we were able to acquire over $500,000, half a million dollars, to fix, um, I think, over 11 barriers on those streams. Six of them opened up new habitat, 23 miles of habitat for fish to access, to spawn, to um, rear their young. And we also eliminated almost 25% of the sedimentation in that river's watershed. So a lot of where these barriers are, you have washouts during flooding at times or times of high water events. So we were able to open up all that mileage for fish and reduce all that sedimentation, which were smothering the babies and their eggs and the in the sediments. So how long did that project take? Uh, that took us about two years. And again, I want to say, I want to get back to, there has been some critique of these kind of planning processes we go to. Well, we were ripe to get access to public funds because we had many years prior to the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative conducted a watershed plan with many partners in that region. Um, Superior Watershed Council, Lake Superior State, uh, Luce County Road Commission, DNR, the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, all those partners, um, there's a, a sportsman's club there, East Branch Sportsman's Club, all those partners were part of a planning process that was mm -hmm. many years ago. And then when this public funding opportunity comes up, we're ready. You're and ready it's not to quite go. shovel ready, but it's design ready. Well, but the and then we're ready to go. The coordination must be staggering to, to have to coordinate with all of those groups to be able to do 11 roadways. To um, yeah, it's staggering, but the f again, the fun thing about doing this type of work is Everybody's ready. Everybody wants to go in that direction. You have partners that are all getting after some common goal. And so that's the, I mean, that it, it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to, and, and staggering to get all those partners together, but everybody's ready to go in the same direction. Is it the next step to, to market, I guess, what you've done or to the proof of performance so people actually see and understand that it, it might be just 11, 11 roadways, but actually the scope of the, the issue? I couldn't have asked a better question myself. That's well, a great question. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, make the big bucks, um, right? You know, I think with any of these things, any type of restoration, um, you can do restoration in that place mm -hmm. for the good of that place, right? Um, that's a good place to do conservation in the Two Harder River watershed. We care about that place. We want to improve the streams and the quality of those streams. But we can get even more conservation done if I can tell a good story about it, if we can market it, if we can monitor it and show the success, show that more people are visiting, more people are catching fish, more people are kayaking, the fish are healthier, um, the birds along those streams are more abundant because there's more fish and more aquatic insects. If we can show all those things and tell that story, then we can even get more conservation done. Well, congratulations on the project that you oh, worked it's a great on. One. That is a good one. So thanks for sharing it with us. Dr. Patrick Doran from the Nature Conservancy in Michigan, you're going to be with us uh, throughout the week uh, for Great Lakes Week.